so excited to bring you a wonderful new author today of one of my just just a great series of historical fiction that you're going to want to get your hands on today. We have Anita Hughes Abriel here today, and we're going to discuss a few of her books and some upcoming pre-releases that you can grab and be the first to order. So welcome, Anita. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, Erin. First of all, I want to say thank you so much for having me. I'm just super excited to be here. So and, happy to have you. Um, and it's fun because it's morning in here in California and it's already after lunch where you are. So that's always fun to be in different time zones. So I write um, uh, historical fiction under my maiden name, which is Anita Abriel. And I had been writing um, for quite a few years as Anita Hughes um, for St. Martin's Press and, and wonderful light commercial fiction, usually set in great locations. I had one book called Lake Como, one book called Rome and Love, which was actually made into a Hallmark movie. Um, my book Christmas in Vermont was made into a Lifetime movie. So a lot of wonderful locations and wonderful fun stories. And then my mother died from Alzheimer's um, a number of years ago, and I really, really, really wanted to write some of her stories because she was a Holocaust survivor. And not only that, but she had kind of a crazy story after the Holocaust that took her from, um, she actually escaped off of a train headed to Auschwitz, and then from there hid in a barn with her best friend, Edith, for a year in Austria, and then was in Naples, um, where she worked for a uh, American captain, and then from Naples to Ellis Island, where she and her um, friend Edith were turned away, and then to Venezuela, and eventually to Australia. So for years, people said, you know, my my family said you need to write that story, and I finally sort of had the the writing you know, the writing, the confidence in my writing to tell that story. And that's the light after the war. And um, it was really a beautiful story to write because so much of it, I didn't change the names, you know, her and her best friend, Edith, my yeah. grandparents, I didn't change anybody's names. And I have, you know, pictures from um, my son went to New York and, um, from the where they tried to get into Ellis Island and it and it you know I have the the ship manifest of the ship's name and then there you know it, it actually says you know their names and their where they're from you know Budapest Hungary and and how old they are in their and their and their occupations which is just amazing you know from 1940 I guess 45 um so it was it was really a tremendously moving book for me to write. And why were they turned away at Ellis Island? Um, well, if I tell you that, then it will spoil a little bit of the plot okay. of the book. But, okay. it, but it's true. I mean, a lot of people. I wondered if it was true. I didn't know. Yeah, a lot of people or... email me or, you know, write me and say, is this part true? Is this part true? And and pretty much it's all true. And and I've even had said, oh, this is too this, you know, this is too um too this can't be true. Yeah. But but it 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 is true. It yeah. it's it's it was pretty much all true. There was just nothing I had to embellish because you know it couldn't have been stranger than it was. We just have to take a minute to honor what a warrior and strong woman your mother was. I mean to go through all of just that first part and then to go to a place where you think you have safe haven and don't, and then take you to these other unknown places. But you have to think like, gosh, if without her and her strength and resilience, you, your son, none of you would be here. Oh, and that just gives me chills, right? Absolutely. And your mom, just a minute to say, wow, what an amazing, strong, resilient woman. And just we're so grateful for her and everything and, she went through. And so young. I think that's what's crazy is, is that they were, you know, they were younger than my my youngest child. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, they were 18, 19, 20, which, you know, these days is when you're having fun and going to parties and, and yeah. 
college. <laughs> yeah. And and they survived, you know, things horrific, that, you know, horrific circumstances. Yeah. And and I'm so grateful that you have, I mean, they have to be also proud of you for showing up and documenting and creating, you know, documenting this legacy. And you're creating such a cornerstone part of this legacy too by sharing these stories. If we don't share these stories, they kind of die with us. And and if we don't learn from them, then how can we, you know, do better in history? So, so powerful. And these novels are just, I don't think people realize if they know the, that's why I'm so glad we do this show so that people can see the backstory of all these novels so that they understand it's not just fiction. It's unfortunately nonfiction or, you know, it's true. And that's what is so, uh, um, so inspiring. My parents, we lived in Germany for uh, several years in my high school years. And I went to a German American high school and my mom and dad would make sure that we went and saw the concentration camps over there. We saw two of them and we'll never forget. And they took us out of school. They were like, you need to see this. Like you need to know, you need to experience, you know, what we, this country's, you know, been through and, really, you know, just understand. And I'll never forget. I remember kind of not wanting to go. I mean, nobody really wants to go. I don't think it's just the heaviest place, but so grateful because it was just such a powerful part of our history that was just so tragic. And gosh, I can't imagine losing your family like that and then being so brave and gosh, and so cool that you are sharing that and, you know, able to do that. And so the light after the war, can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, what, how is that like, was it hard to write that? Was it uh, cathartic? What, what was the process like for you? It, it was very interesting because, you know, growing up as a child, you're, you're pretty, children are pretty self-centered. And, yeah. you know, there, there were parts of, of her history that I took for granted just because, you know, like um, that, that she doesn't, I don't want to give away again to any much of the plot, but that she makes the choices that she does. I just, as a child, I thought, well, yeah, of course, of course that makes sense. But then knowing her, you know, her story now being an adult and a woman, a lot of her choices were, were you know, were, were difficult ones to make, re really difficult ones to make. And then also as a child, you know, my grandparents lived with us in Sydney and they spoke Hungarian to each other all the time at home. And, you know, I'd kind of roll my eyes and put up with it. And and then, you know, all the Hungarian food that we ate that, you know, my grandmother still prepared and, and you just kind of, you know, like, okay, fine. And, but writing it, it just had so much more significance. And um, it also, made me really think about, you know, my religious beliefs and my, you know, my, my whole, really my history in, yeah. in ways that I hadn't before, because you, you just try to kind of skim over, you know, your, I mean, I've read historical fiction based on the Holocaust and, and, you know, it always made my heart, um, you know, tear my heart apart, but, never so close to me. So it was, it was a very, very moving experience actually. How old were you when you realized that your mom was a Holocaust survivor? Um, well, I think in a way always, because um, in Sydney where I grew up in the, in the sixties, there was a lot, I mean, a ton of Holocaust survivors because that's where everybody went when they weren't allowed into America. Or, you know, people went to Australia, Canada, South Africa, and America, um, m most of them. So my grandmother had seven brothers and sisters. I think five of them survived and four of them ended up in Australia. And my best friend, I mean, this is the kind of thing that one just doesn't think about. My best friend growing up um, who was adopted because her mother couldn't have children, she spent, and these were, you know, a well-to-do family. Her, the, her mother spent her entire life lying in a dark room 
And it was because she was in a concentration camp and, you know, kind of never got further than that. And, and I didn't really think anything about it. You know, she, they had a, they had a cute dog and I mean, the mother would, you know, get up to, to have dinner with everybody, but, you know, I'd go in there a million times and she'd just be in this dark room. So you just kind of get used to things as a child, but, but a lot in Australia, then all, everyone spoke, you know, Hungarian, Polish, German. Wow. Um, yeah. Wow. What was, uh, can you talk a little bit about Lana's war? Is that? Yes. La Lana's war, um, was so, yeah. also inspired by my mother's, um, some of her stories in that she loved the French Riviera and she would always talk about the French Riviera, um, specifically uh, Cannes and, and Nice. And so I, I one day just kind of started to do some research on the French Riviera and discovered that um, it was a very safe place for Jews. And then, then the um, head of the Gestapo was, um, for for this for the French Riviera, came down to the French Riviera in um, September of 1943 with the orders to exterminate all the Jews, and so it went from being a safe place where where the Jews had actually you know come from 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 the northern mm -hmm. France, which was um, you know the Vichy government, and 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 Jews were taken off the beach and and put on trains. Um, to Drancy and then to the concentration camps in their in their board shorts, and so um, in their swimming trunks. So it was, and there's actually a plaque outside the Hotel Excelsior in Nice today that um, says that you know that was the Gestapo headquarters during the war and and how many Jews were lost because of it. So I thought it was a really fascinating. Um, you know, blend of of what a gorgeous, gorgeous place, what a beautiful setting, what an idyllic place, and what terrible, terrible things happen there. Yeah. So that uh, opening, I don't want to give anything away, but you guys have to get you have to pick up Lana's War. Uh, the first, the first scene. I mean, it's, it's it's hard and 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 so real. Like this, it's crazy to think th these things happen th this this really did happen and that's the heartbreaking part about all of your books is that there's but also it's a reminder too that life is messy and and I pers I don't want to read books that are just perfect I want to read real history and real things and feel and escape from you know escape to another time like you said and experience the French Riviera and experience life in another point of view and and you really do capture that. So you have some really great things coming up. Um, which would you want to talk about first? Do you want to talk about a girl during the war or the Italian girl? Um, well, a girl during the war and the Italian girl is the same book. Okay. So uh, so we've got a magical New York Christmas and a girl during the war. Okay. And then, okay, so a girl during maybe, the war, yeah, that comes out March 8th, right? March 8th? Yes, yes. Yeah. And what what had inspired you for this book? How does that was a really really interesting book to write. Again, it's it's you start going down the rabbit hole of, of mm -hmm. research, and um, it's set in Rome and and Florence, Tuscany, um, during the it, it, the German occupation. And I started doing a little bit of research and discovered that the um, that all the bridges in Florence. There was only one left standing um, after the Germans retreated because they blew them all up with bombs because they wanted, um, they didn't want the Allies to, you know, get into to Florence. Um, they wanted to stop them, mm -hmm. and the only one that was that stayed was the the Ponte Vecchio, and that's because the um, German consul at the time was a huge uh, lover of Renaissance art, and he was trying to you know, to help the allies basically and, and not destroy all the antiquity of Florence. And well, I, I start cannot wait for that one. You guys can pre-order that. 
And it really helps Anita if you pre-order that because then they know how many to publish. There won't be any lags and you'll have plenty of books. And what's cool about pre-orders, guys, is that you, if you read on a device, it'll be on your device on March 8th, 2022, or it'll be shipped to your house that day. So that'll be really lovely to have that and you can start reading right away. I'm so excited for that book too. I You have a gift for her words with this part of history, for sure. And we're grateful to have your voice for this. Thank you. Um, um, and then you also write under Anita Hughes and you've written, how many books have you written under Anita Hughes? I think at last count, 18. I'm wow. not quite sure. <laughs> kind of okay. lost. So you have a magical New York Christmas coming out? On Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. Happy early pub day. That's coming up quick. You guys can also pre-order that. It's 15% off right now. So you can grab that and it'll be on your device or ship to your house Tuesday, which is nice because they say there's shortages on books and things right now. So if you, I always say, if you know you want something, get it. Don't wait. Uh, there's a lot of things on back order right now and we don't want to do that. So Grab that now so you have it. What was, what's a magical New York Christmas? Uh, that was a really fun book to write. It's set at the um, Plaza Hotel in New York. And um, it's about a, a, a broke journalist who takes a job as a ghost writer um, for a, a, a famous art collector. And um, and then she meets this guy and, you know, um, they things happen between her and this guy. But what was really interesting about it is that um, we learn a lot about the the uh, creator of the Eloise books because she stayed at the plaza. Um, her name was K Kay Thompson and she, she lived at the plaza um, while she was writing the Eloise books. And there's, there's a, part of it that is true, some, something that happened. She, there was a, um, a painting of Eloise that she was given on a famous talk show and she, she didn't want it because she, her life at that time was just, you know, Eloise. So she, she gave it to the plaza to hang and it was stolen from, from the wall. And it, it, it showed up 50 years later and now it's back to the plaza. So that's fascinating. That, that's all in it. So it's really fun to write. I really enjoyed that. What are you working on now? I am working on um, another historical fiction, which I won't say anything about at the moment. And but then we have good things in the hopper coming. And then another Christmas book as well. Awesome. Okay. So I have to ask you this because I'm a big Hallmark fan. Um, and I know a lot of us watching are too. What's, this, what's it like to watch Hallmark and watch a movie you wrote? That's fascinating. <laughs> they do a lovely, lovely job. And then actually Christmas in Vermont was made into a lifetime movie as well with a different name. Um, and it was it was really fun. I mean, really fun. And Roman Love was um, is kind of my version of uh, Roman Holiday. And so they actually filmed it in a suite at the Hassler which is where Audrey Hepburn stayed during the Roman holiday. That's so, really cool. So it was, it was, yeah, I, I love Rome, Rome. They did a great job. If it's, if it's on reruns, everybody loved it. it you that know, is awesome. It. Well, I'm going to be looking now and seeing all the ones that you have been, been, have made into movies and watching them. That'll be really fun. I always like to ask this so that we can get some ideas. What are you reading right now? I just picked up um, the show Girl by Nicola Harrison. Oh, have you started it? I did last night, and I loved Montauk, her book Montauk. Yes. Um, so I, 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 <laughs> I'm. It's embarrassing. I, I go to the library almost every day. I, I love the library. Yes, yes. we do. <laughs> in the grocery store, um, and I tend to read actually like two or three books at, the, at a time. Yeah, it's enough. Yeah, uh, we had Nicola on the show a few weeks ago, and she is absolutely lovely. And she explained uh, all about how she wrote the Showgirl, and it was actually one of my favorite books of 2021. I loved, loved, loved it. And I don't know if you ever listen to Spotify, but mm -hmm. she has a play a playlist for, and I'll send it to you after this. 
Wow. Um, I'll send it an email and you can download it and listen to it at, like on your walks or something. And it, it's all the music that she listened to for inspiration for writing the book. And there's a particular scene that you probably haven't gotten to yet. It's probably like 75% through the book. And I'll tell you which one it is. And she, that was the, the song she played over and over and over as she wrote that scene. So that was kind of fun. Oh, you fun. Can go back and watch that interview. It was really fun. And yeah. she's a great yeah, I will. I will. Great yeah. author. He's a very uh, good author. Yeah. 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 And I always like to ask this question too, so we can all get ideas too. What are you watching right now? Oh, I tend to watch um, an awful lot of old classic movies to give me ideas, but I've loved some of my favorite things lately. I loved Emily in Paris. I absolutely loved that. Um, and I really liked The Chair also on Netflix um, about, you know, women in higher education. That, that, nice. that, was, that was fun. Um, what advice would you give for aspiring creatives or aspiring writers? I think the advice that my agent gives me, which is always right from the heart. You know, I think that's just kind of the best advice that if you really have a story inside you and, and, just really write from the heart and the, the prose can be simple and, you know, it doesn't have to do gymnastics over itself. Um, but to just really, you know, write what you want to share with others. That is great advice. Where can we find you on social media and support you? Um, so I am on Facebook and, um, and Instagram. I'm a little lax on posting on Instagram, but I'm on there and on, on Twitter. So awesome. awesome. And what is your social handle for Instagram? Um, I think it is just that Anita Hughes, Abriel. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being a guest oh, on the show. I you. absolutely love your books. I cannot wait to uh, order your Christmas book and look up all your movies now. That's so fun. Oh, well, thanks. It's a delight to be here. One wonderful way to start my day. Awesome. Well, we're so thankful to have you. Thank you so much. And we can't wait to see what you put out next. Um, so amazing. Thank you. Thank you all. All right. All right. All right. Amazon, thank you so much. Thanks for tuning in to Anita hughes Abriel. We loved having her on the show. Be sure to tune in Monday through Friday at 1 p.m. We have all new authors every day and we'd love to introduce you to them. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.